So while on the topic of Francis Ngannou, why don't we talk about uh, the fight that Francis had that made everyone really sit up? Like the one fight that everybody going in thought, oh my God, man, this Francis is in serious trouble with this one. And that's his fight against Cain Velasquez. Like we all thought, a vast majority of people thought that uh, Cain was going to turn the fight into the sort of fight he had with Junior Dos Santos. I mean, this is Cain Velasquez we're talking about. You know, a, a man who's known for his incredible cardio. Of course, Francis is not exactly known for having really good cardio. And so, you know, we all thought that it was going to look a certain way. But it didn't. And so what I've done here is I've sort of recreated what I think the fight was supposed to look like. What we all thought it was going to look like. And I'm just going to commentate over it right here. Um, I was playing as Cain Velasquez. Um, I turned Francis's power all the way up. But his stamina, I reduced it. Um, I reduced it to a degree where he won't really be able to tee off on Cain Velasquez without gassing out. And then, of course, with my Cain Velasquez, I made his stamina a bit more realistic to allow me to fight like Cain actually fights, right? Like the way Cain Velasquez fought Junior Dos Santos, for example, you know, taking him down over and over again, being very aggressive on the feet, basically pouring a ridiculous amount of aggression on the man. That is prime Cain Velasquez. We've seen him do that multiple times to fighters. And so right here, boom. Francis down again and as you can see his stamina is already going down bro that stamina is already he's already feeling it and this is around where uh, Kane's opponents I mean you can visually see them it's not just a physical fatigue it's also a mental fatigue right because the one thing Kane also does a very good job of is he doesn't really put a lot of effort into holding down opponents like you notice that when he fights He'll let guys move, he'll let them turn their backs, he'll he'll take their back, he'll ride them a little bit. A lot of times they'll even make their way back up to their feet, but then he'll just do this, take them right back down again. And that action of getting back up, getting taken down again, getting back to guard, finding a way to stand back up, then you try to throw a shot, he drags you down again, rinse and repeat over and over again. It's a very demoralizing feeling like it it taxes you not just physically but also mentally because like you get this sense that oh my god is this really what this whole entire fight is gonna be am i just gonna stand back up use all this energy to stand back up only to get dragged down to the ground again and uh it just puts a lot of doubt in you which forces fatigue i'm telling you guys man like when you're grappling and you just feel like your opponent is one step ahead of you at every turn. It really, really gasses you out. And so in this fight, I was trying to do that. Let uh, just, just let him work. Not really put too much effort into holding him down in one position. Because like if you hold a man down in one position, you could actually allow him to rest. You know, you could really let him rest. Like if you're like, you know, mounting him and just pinning him. You're giving him time. If, if he knows how to calm his breathing, calm his mind, he could actually rest and recover some stamina. But if you let him move, if you make him think he's about to, he's about to get, uh, he's, he's about to get something going, but then you take it away from him. Oh my God, it is demoralizing. That plus uh, grounding and pounding him, it, it, it's, it's bad. So um, the initial thought going into this fight between Kane and, uh, and Francis was that it was probably going to end somewhere round number two, round number three. By round number two, um, Kane was supposed to have gassed Francis out enough to maybe either stop him by ground and pound or most likely submit him, right? And so round number one, as you guys can see right there, look at Kane's stamina. Look at Francis's. I push him against the cage again to the body. And you'll notice I'm keeping a high work rate. It's, it's a combination of high work rate with the striking and high work rate with the grappling. Take down again. Boom on his back. It's just over and over and over. By the way, you cannot play. You cannot use King like this in UFC 4. You can't do it. <laughs> you, cannot, you cannot use him like this. You're going to gas yourself out. Like Just trying to work. Um, trying to work this hard in the first round, you're not going to have the short-term stamina to even keep it up. You're going to have to wait a long time 
to recover short-term stamina. Like Kane does not feel like Kane in UFC 4 at all. Like you just you can't do this. Oh, that's one more thing right there. Um at some point in the fight, because he is fighting, well, Francis and Ganu. The thought is, well, he might get hurt. But one thing Kane has always demonstrated in the past is that he has a very good ability to, to recover. If you guys watch his fight between Chikongo, as well as his fight bet, uh, versus, I believe, Ben Rothwell, um, he was rocked a few times in those fights. But, um, you know, every time he would get rocked because of his incredible stamina, because of his ability to, uh, uh, because of his stamina, he was able to recover very, very quickly. And so I was thinking, what happened right here is a, it was a possibility if the fight would have played out exactly as it's supposed to. But as we know, Francis stopped him very, very early. So it didn't play out like we all thought it was going to. But if it did, at some point, Francis would have probably hurt him, Kane would have recovered. And kept going. And by round number two, the thought is Francis, the stamina difference would have been so noticeable that uh, Ngannou just probably wouldn't have had anything really left in the tank to keep fighting this man. I mean, if, if there's truly, there wasn't a worst matchup for Francis when this fight was announced. The fact that they put him in, in there against Kane Velasquez, it almost seemed like some kind of hit. It almost seemed like, like the UFC wanted the man to lose, man. They, I'm like, Francis Ngannou? The guy that we, we've seen have stamina issues against Stipe Miocic is fighting Cain Velasquez now? That said, though, I mean, that was, a, that was a much heavier Francis who really didn't put a lot of time into training. And he still went five rounds with Stipe. So there's also that to consider. Right there, man. Look at the stamina difference, bro. <laughs> like he's, he's gassed. I mean, he has no short-term stamina. He can't really keep up a work rate. Right there. I'm gonna take his back. I believe I get on his back right there. Jump the back, and we are gonna go into a rear naked choke right away. We're gonna systematically, systematically end this fight right here. Look at that arm. Under the chin, we're going to get that straight jacket going, trap the arm, lock the rear naked choke, and that's it. Francis Ngannou goes to sleep. Look at that. Puts him out cold. Yep. If the fight would have played out like we thought it would, like, like, like a lot of people thought it would, this, in my opinion, is probably how it would have looked. It would have been a lot of aggression from Cain Velasquez, a whole lot of takedowns. He would have gassed out Francis and Gano. Um, he would have confused him with uh, taking him down when Francis thinks he's going to strike, striking with him when Francis thinks he's going to take him down, which of course makes Cain far more dangerous on the feet because while you're trying to like brace for his takedown, he's hitting you on the feet. He's punching you. He's kicking you. Um, and then eventually, he would have probably got Francis's back because Francis would have gave his back somehow, and uh, it would have ended Ladies with some kind of rear naked choke. That's that's it happens all the time like that. So there you have it, man. Different kind of video. I found it interesting to to try to make. Um, I'll probably do more like this. How it should have ended, kind of thing. How it should have played out, and then just try to play it and uh, and go from there. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like. Uh, follow me on Instagram at MarshallMindArt. And uh, I will see you guys later with a brand new one. As always, stay safe. Peace out. Have a good one, boys.